you're driving to work, you're late for work, so on and so forth, you're very stressed out, you get a flat tire. You never want to get a flat tire going to work. It deters you from your end goal of getting to work. So there's a few things you can do. You can sit in your car, you can cry, you can do nothing about it. You panic, you can get mad and angry, you can do nothing about it. Or the key is you can come up with a solution. I see my victory so clear. I see my victory so clear. It's a day we break through. It's a day we break through. It's a day we break through. It's a day. Losing your job, pharmacies closing, competitiveness rising. One truth to pharmacy as a profession is that change is rising at a much more rapid rate. Another truth with that is how you view our environment of pharmacy will determine the actions you take to equip yourself with what you need to succeed. Basically, what I'm saying is that working to improve your practice to pivot is now more critical than ever. The power of the pivot will enable you to not only adapt to change, but to quickly and effectively use change rather than allow change to use you and bear the brunt of what could happen if you're not ready when the inevitable opportunity strikes. That's why I'm so excited to bring back one of the original OG podcast guests to the show, Dr. Joshua Stone King who is, in my opinion, of all the pharmacy contacts I know, the grand master of pivoting. And I'm really excited for him to be on to talk about this uh, with pharmacy changing, uh, especially in the community practice where I'm in, uh, but across pharmacy overall, because he has extensive experience, not just preaching it, but practicing it throughout his pharmacy career. And I'm really excited for him to share what he's learned and his best practice tips so that you can use them to empower your best life and live to dispense your full potential. Now, if you're not familiar with Josh, one, where have you been, yo? But two, I'm gonna give you a little intro about who this amazing man is. Josh is the epitome of the fit pharmacist, not only what he does physically, but mentally as well. He is an award-winning pharmacist for a growing Inc. 5000 specialty pharmacy who uses his unique and in-depth knowledge to create strategic partnerships and grow specialty pharmacies across the country. Josh is passionate about his pharmacies and pharmacy partner. He specializes in bringing a peace of mind and superlative value to those pharmacy partners, as well as accelerated growth to his current pharmacies. He takes pride in building a team atmosphere and always goes the extra mile to provide his patients with the highest level of specialty care. By making an industry leap from a clinical pharmacist to a specialty pharmacy director, Josh found professional success at a high level, earning his company's highest awards in oncology five years in a row. Currently, he coaches and leads a strong team of exceptionally skilled regional account managers and operational experts across the country. Josh earned his Bachelor's of Science degree in exercise physiology and his Doctor of Pharmacy degree, both from West Virginia University School of Medicine, while completing his PGY1 residency, training at Indian River Medical Center in Vero Beach, Florida. Outside of the pharmacy, which is where Josh and I crossed paths many years ago, Josh is a natural men's physique bodybuilding professional and a five-time champion. He currently resides in Tampa, Florida, but will always maintain his original West by God, Virginia roots. Dr. Josh, welcome back to the Fit Pharmacist Healthcare Podcast. Me, and that is quite the introduction, my friend. I can tell you this. I have a big smile on my face after hearing all that, and uh, very, very happy to represent the Fit Pharmacist as one of the original OGs. That makes me feel great, and uh, happy to be here and have another great conversation today as well. Man, I'm excited and you, real talk, like the OG, we, I've been doing this for what, seven and eight years or whatnot it, in the beginning, very low key, but it's scaled. But yeah, man, once I saw you hustling and putting in the work and then you post like your competitive shows, cause this guy competes a lot, a lot. I'm like, yo, yo, what's you up to? Like you're into fitness, but you're crushing it in pharmacy world. Like this is what we're about right here. So uh, we connected on, you know, the OG way on Instagram, I think uh, four or five years ago. 
And it's just been so phenomenal, inspiring to follow your journey, man. Like truly, you are a leader in this profession for all the right reasons. So I just want to take a quick uh, thank you to you and acknowledge you for all the amazing stuff that you're doing, not only for your company and your patients, uh, but for our profession of pharmacy overall. Feels absolutely incredible. You know, not every day um, do you get to kind of take a step back, reflect, and look back at the things you've done, um, discuss those things, and hopefully share your story so you can help others, you know, along their own current professional and personal path. So anytime I can share anything about the pharmacy, the business, and of course, uh, we love to discuss bodybuilding. It's just our, our second or third passion that we have. More than happy to do so. So thank you again. So guys, if you're, if you're listening to this, you won't, you won't see it, but if you're watching the video, uh, before we started, uh, Josh had a little drink through, from his bodybuilding cup. So bring that back in, yo. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Cheers, man. Me too. <laughs> Done. So I just got back from uh, squatting, and that's why I have this, and I saw him pull that out, and I'm like, man, <laughs> bodybuilder salute. You can't get deeper than the gallon of water for your water bottle. So side note, tangent, back in the game now. Um, but what you said is really great, that you're, you're sharing your stories, being able to reflect and see the lessons that you've learned so that you can take those, implement them, and, and share them not only with other professionals, but with people that you lead. And that's really been your role that has changed, I believe you said, three times in the last 18 months. Um, but I want to start at the beginning. Back, you said about eight years when you first learned the concept of pivoting. Um, so if people listening to this uh, aren't in the entrepreneurial mindset or, or they've heard of pivot before, but they thought it was just kind of during intramurals and gym where like you, you're walking one way and then you pivot another, uh, in essence, that, that's, that's the simplest way to explain that. Uh, but can you kind of explain to the listeners, the viewers, what pivoting is, how you learned this yourself those eight years ago? Fascinating story. Um, every time, just like yourself, that I heard the word pivoting, I thought of Michael Jordan and the crossover or Allen Iverson, right? Pivot in basketball. I did not understand this. I was flown out to Phoenix, Arizona, and it was the first time I ever met my executive team. Uh, the leader of our branch at that point in time, his name was Hamilton. I'll leave his last name out. He is a personal mentor to mine as well. He asked me the question, he said, Josh, if X and Y happens within the pharmacy and you want to be a leader, how are you going to pivot? I literally had a look at him as a young professional. I don't understand the question, right? Which was great because, you know, in pharmacy, when you don't know, please do not say something incorrect. Tell them you don't know. So my pharmacist came out and I was very open with, I don't know. He then explained to me what pivoting was. What pivoting meant to him was when the business is going in a very straight and narrow direction, we're hyper-focused on this direction, there are outside influences or things in business that you cannot control where you have to take a hard right or a hard left turn. And it actually deters you from maybe your original goal or thing that you were trying to accomplish. But in business, sometimes that original goal or thing you have no control over with legal ramifications, the FDA, the DEA, new regulations with USP 797, where you actually have to pivot and create a new goal instantly. So there are some ways of pivoting um, that will provide benefit to your pharmacy, you personally, and of course, which will help you reach your end goal still because your current goal may be completely gone. Because as we all cannot fight, is different regulations, rules, and so on and so forth in pharmacy. Wow. So that's interesting that you learned that early on. And that moment of getting caught with your pants down uh, just kind of gives you that flood of, oh, crap, I don't know. Which, if you're listening to this, you're a pharmacy student or a pharmacist, guarantee that's happened to you, whether that's a mentor, a partner, uh, or a patient. And we can't know everything. Uh, the key is not to memorize all the books, all the websites, everything else. The key is to learn from those circumstances and to know where to find the answer. Um, that's why this concept of pivoting, I mean, you guys have seen the headlines. Pharmacists fired overnight, pharmacies closing, um, the whole Amazon thing, all the change that's going on. That's just community, not to mention all the other areas in pharmacy. So, uh, unfortunately, what floods people's mind is fear because it is the unknown. Now, what I'm challenging you to do is instead of focusing on that fear, look at it as opportunity. 
And Josh talked about how to pivot because it's a reality, especially in pharmacy. Really in any profession, in any area of your life, you're going to need to pivot. At some point, that's a guarantee. But what I want to really equip you guys with from this episode are simple solutions that you can start implementing now to prepare yourself so that when you are faced and have to pivot, whether because you have a great opportunity and like you know, like seize opportunities when they come, you have to be ready to do that. You have to have put in the work ahead of time. Or if there is something like Josh said that happens where there's regulation or, you know, God forbid your pharmacy closes down or something like that, it's not like, oh, let me, you know, my pharmacy's closing today. Let me go and, you know, write a game plan and think about it and contact my men. No, that is not reality. That like, I don't say this to scare you. I say this to empower you because the actions you take today, the preparation is going to reward tomorrow's achievement. That is the reality. That is the truth. Um, so Josh, you have extensive experience. Can you kind of walk us through um, what those three big changes, because you've gone through a lot in your career, um, but bring us up to speed in current day, uh, the three big changes that have happened in the last 18 months, just to give people some context and story from you, what you've experienced. So what the roles changed, how those changes came about, and the outcomes that you experienced from those. You make a great point um, with pivoting and not becoming frustrated. And, and I have some great tips to advise our awesome pharmacy listeners um, to get through those hard times. But a little bit of background on my recent pivots, um, which absolutely were not done on the basketball courts. They were done in the pharmacy realm. The first one is my pharmacy was purchased. That is a scary situation, no matter what type of business you're in. There are a lot of new leaders, some people that you love very much are leaving your current pharmacy and going elsewhere. And then of course, we always have that fear of unknown because there is the word of mouth within a pharmacy. We are one big happy family. So things can go from one end of the floor to the next. Um, the second is, of course, my role was changed. I went from being a general manager of a pharmacy. So in my safe space within the pharmacy that we feel so comfortable in, um, to becoming responsible for the entire country within a different division. So I left my safety safe of what I knew very well in my personal pharmacy to having to learn something new. Um, now with that, you look about probably three or four months ago, we've decided within the new company and my new role that we are going to scale our new business across the country from two pharmacies. So again, I have to get used to different cultures and workflows and environments across the country, working with very unique pharmacy teams and pharmacists and board of pharmacies who all have different laws so therefore we have to pivot no matter what state i'm in um, so those would be the three pivot points i have experienced within the past 18 months and most of those would be considered major pivots in my opinion as well as probably the majority of our listeners as well yeah yeah <laughs> whoa okay wow said i have three keys that get me through all of these unique situations um, the very first one is I hope everybody has a pen and paper or you say this to yourself because I tell myself this daily. I'm a big fan of speaking things into reality. So yes, I talk to myself and I, uh, it's a matter of opinion if I'm crazy or not. So the first thing that is the most important is pivot. Do not panic. Pivot. Do not panic. This is what Hamilton taught me six years ago when I got caught with my pants down. Okay. Okay. <laughs> pivot don't panic so the situation where you want to think in your head is with a flat tire it's what we can compare to everything you're driving to work you're late for work so on and so forth you're very stressed out you get a flat tire you never want to get a flat tire going to work it deters you from your end goal of getting to work so there's a few things you can do you can sit in your car you can cry you can do nothing about it you panic you can get mad and angry you can do nothing about it or the key is you can come up with a solution the majority of our listeners are pharmacists. They have a very high IQ as well as an EQ. They can figure out a solution quickly. So when you need to pivot and not panic, you would like to come up with a solution quickly to disregard the problem or disfuse the problem that you're currently having that is making you pivot. So when you have that flat tire, A, you can change it yourself. B, you can call a tow truck. C, you can phone a friend to come and help you. You come up with a solution quickly so you can get back on the road and back to your end goal. So pivot, don't panic is the number one takeaway when it happens there. 
because panicking never helps. All right. That's the second, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, the second takeaway is a dangerous statement because it has the word assume in it. And all we've been taught through pharmacy school and through our personal lives is it's never safe to assume. But with this statement, you'll see why assuming is safe. The next note is assume positive intent. That means it's safe to assume these things that are happening in your life or within the pharmacy are for the best reasons. Now, if you're one of those people that say, Josh, Adam, why in the heck would I assume anything? That actually is the opposite way of thinking of assuming positive intent because you're thinking by assuming somebody is going to have something bad to get out for you or the new business model has negative intentions or when you get purchased by a company, you think they're going to close your branch. Um, most companies don't buy another company to close them. They buy them because they are interested in their high level of business and want to grow them. Welcome to 2019 where businesses grow, right? So you don't want to think negatively. You want to assume positive intent. The next step, what you, a cat, just like in step one, we can relate to Michael Jordan is remain curious. Do not become agitated when these pivot points happen. Do not become frustrated. Do not stay on the lower level of what we call the mood elevator. Remain curious, ask questions. Why is this happening? What are the reasonings behind this? And get those answers back in a mode of what we call verbal Taekwondo. So when you ask that question, you receive an answer and ask a follow-up question. So you can maybe understand why that you have to pivot. Because when we pivot, nine out of 10 times, it is not an option. So those three take-homes are pivot, don't panic, assume positive intent, and stay curious. Got them written down, Adam? Awesome. I wrote them down, and what you said is phenomenal points, and it actually got me thinking of a few lessons that I've learned in, in my life and career as well. And I'm going to go through these uh, one by one just to echo the awesome points that you made. Guys, first one, pivot don't, pivot, don't panic. So, so key, and I love that alliteration. If you've been following me, you know I'm like obsessed with it. Uh, my one mentor, uh, Dr. Joe Klemzeski, says, it's like you've got a Dr. Seuss track going on in your head. Cut it out. <laughs> but I mean, I love it. That's great. But coming back to the point you made and the example of the spare tire, um, this is actually a huge life lesson when it comes to attitude and how to handle adversity. So when you get a spare tire, or, or I'm sorry, when you get a flat tire, that you have four tires on a car, right? So when you have one flat tire, do you then go and put a knife to the other three tires and just like screw yourself even more? Or do you realize that because you have a flat tire, every car has a spare and there's a reason for that because things happen, life happens. That's why you are literally legally required to have a spare tire because life happens. So that is super key and how you can really focus on what to do and realize that the spare tire being a analogy for preparation, you have to have that in the bank, whether that's networking, skill development, whatever that might be, you have to put in the work ahead of time because tomorrow's achievement is determined by today's preparation. So think of that the next time you get adversity. The second thing you said, which I love so much, you said, assume positive intent and Something that it really struck me uh, in the last year or two that's really changed my perspective and my attitude is when something happens that you don't want or don't expect, ask yourself the question, how is this happening for me, not, oh my goodness, this happened to me. So realize that in every situation that comes up, see that life is happening for you, not to you. When you make, I know this sounds overly simple. But when you make this little shift, you are going to get so much more juice out of life. Because think of it, when things are going your way, awesome. When things aren't going your way, you're going to get something out of it you didn't expect. It's a literally unanswered prayer or a blessing that you didn't even ask for. So your mindset, your change, and what you're looking for comes from Josh's second tip, assume positive intent. Now, the third one is really key and you guys know I'm huge on mindset, I'm huge, huge on emotions. Josh said if you're listening you have not only positive or high IQ but EQ, right? So emotions is huge. 
His third point was remain curious. And I want to give you guys this really big thing that I've given myself, I've given my partners through the years, and I've given to my techs especially. Because when people come in the pharmacy, they're not having the best day. People that are super healthy generally aren't coming in the pharmacy. They have a terrible diagnosis, they're dealing with a health condition, they're acutely sick. So a lot of times they're not in the right state of mind. Don't take things personally. A lot of times, however, you can be the, the brunt of that. And they're not directing it towards you. They're just, you know, trying to get things out. Or if something terrible happens to you, let's say you get a flat tire. Let's say your pharmacy does close down or your pharmacy gets bought. Here is one piece of advice that I want to piggyback off of what Josh says when it comes to how you feel from those things. Never make a long-term decision based on a short-term emotion. This is so key, guys. You are going to experience all of the emotions, a lot of times in one single day, maybe in one single hour if you have a really heated discussion with someone. But what you do, the actions you take, don't make those long-term things or consequences that you're going to regret, regret just based on a short-term emotion. Because emotions come, they change. You might be listening to this podcast, super serious, taking notes, like you're all in like the, you know, I'm raising my awareness point of mind. But then you see like a puppy on the road and immediately you're like happy. You're like, oh, ha, ha, ha. so your emotion just changed in a split second. Realize that, use that, leverage that so you can pivot when these things come your way. So just to recap these awesome points by Josh, number one, pivot, don't panic. You have a spare tire for a reason. Put in the work ahead of time so you have that spare tire in the trunk when you need it. Number two, assume positive intent. Know and believe that life is happening for you, not to you. And third, remain curious. Don't make long-term decisions based on short-term emotions. Thank you for that. Um, the explanations were absolutely spot on. Um, the best thing is, is the spare tire because you can relate that to every situation in your life to the point where things happen to me um, I will say under my breath, spare tire, because I know it's happening. And of course, human nature is when these pivot points come into your life, first reaction, before you are accustomed to pivoting, you're agitated, you're not curious. So have that little trigger to yourself. So for me, I say to me and my team, spare tire, and we know what to do. I love that, man. I love that. So that's actually a great question. Um, because you're, you're, clearly a master. I'm sure you don't consider yourself this. You're very humble. But in my opinion, you're a master of managing people in a good way. You're, you're a leader, not a boss. You lead by example. You don't dictate things. You say, here's how we're going to do them. Do it and show them and guide them through that process. So whether this is for a teammate at any level, uh, if you're listening to this, if you're an intern, if you're a pharmacist uh, or a or pharmacy student, let's say that you're in a situation. So you, you, you take these three points that Josh made, you internalize them, you're practicing them, you're good. However, not everyone listens to this podcast, but they should. So when you have a teammate, Josh, that you've seen in these times when pivoting is happening unexpectedly and you see someone that is not prepared, but you have to remain calm, you have to lead with that certainty, with that, okay, everything's gonna be okay, spare tire. What is a suggestion that you have found that has been helpful for someone that you're working with, with someone that you're leading, when a uncertainty happens or when a pivot point comes up, but they just allow this emotion to get the best of them? And whether they realize it or not, they start assuming the worst and looking towards the negative instead of these three points. What is a, a strategy or a tip that you can give the listeners or viewers on how to redirect people towards these three points? Well, question with an even better example. So these things happen daily. And now let's speak from a leadership standpoint only. Your pharmacy's goal comes in from say the board or the regional director or so on and so forth. And you have to remain emotionally stable. So you truly cannot panic as bad as you want to because you know your technicians or your staff will absorb your energy. They know you better than you know yourself. Some technicians have worked with us, Adam, 
for 10, 15 years. They know for yourself. They know when you're upset. So you have to control your emotions and be mentally tough and have self-discipline in those moments. So in those situations, yes, sometimes we know they'll be dropped on you like a ton of bricks. Other times they'll be given to you in a meeting room. This is where you ask those questions to whoever is relaying you that message of why you need to pivot. That is where you reverse this and stay curious, ask those questions, then do not panic because your staff will see it. And when you walk out of that office or boardroom or off that phone call and your staff's asking you, hey, what is going on? That is where you remain positive. You assume and understand the positive intent. You are emotionally put together and you deliver the message to your team in a positive manner where they understand this is the best for the business, the pharmacy, and your patients. So that is my tips on that situation on how to get through it. Love it. So lead by example. It's not easy. And you know, you, you guys have heard this quote from Spider-Man actually time and time again, with great power comes great responsibility. Leadership is a huge power play and that's something to take very seriously. Um, you want to lead your team by example. Again, a overly used quote, but it's so true. So it, 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 we have that emotional trigger where it's like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Da, da, da. But you have to remain composed because just like Josh said, people will mimic the leader, like follow the leader. Another thing you've heard that goes in so many different directions. Um, I've seen this in my own practice and community pharmacy and, and just observing it in other practices. When leadership freaks out or anything like that, it's, it just spreads like wildfire. However, if you remain composed and everyone else is freaking out, they're going to be like, why is he calm? And then come to you curiously asking for direction. So just by maintaining your calmness, that's going to open a door for communication and leadership and guidance. Because if you just freak out and say, oh my God, it's terrible, blah, 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 everyone else is going to follow suit. And if you like catch yourself after doing that and try to come back, it's not going to be very effective because they're going to be like, well, you just acted this way, but now you're telling us to come back and you're right. It is crazy. Blah, 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 blah. Let's burn the couches, like all this stuff. Right? So that's so, so key. It's not easy. It's super, super difficult, but that's why having all these skills that we do in this podcast about mindset, about emotional intelligence, about putting in all the work to prepare for the inevitable that will come being the unexpected, the changes, the pivot points, being able to put in the work now so that you can utilize that down the road, not if, but when it happens, that's going to equip you for success, not only in your own career, but from a leadership perspective. Recap was spot on. These are practices that we need to take as leaders, not just into the pharmacy, outside the pharmacy, but into our personal lives as well. Um, because as you know, in society, it's always beneficial to lead your family, your neighborhood, you know, whoever you represent, just as you do in the pharmacy. You know, we know it's okay to be the utmost professional within the building. And also you can be a lot more lax outside of that building when you're with your family and friends, but still always remaining calm, being that emotional leader, people absorb your energy. And that's something that we know. So you want to leave that positive mark and that positive energy on everybody around you, regardless if it's in your career or in your family. So, so spot on, man. Wow. Like what you delivered here today was just so packed with value on so many levels, not just pharmacy, but on life overall. Uh, coming to like what your personal uh, goals are, uh, relationships, pharmacy. If you're not a pharmacist yet, you're in pharmacy school. You're thinking of doing pharmacy school. These concepts can apply to literally every area in your life. And if you start putting these into practice now, it's going to pay dividends down the road because I want to reiterate what we're talking about is not some like pipe dream or some like crazy superstition or something that we're like, you know, change is crazy and, you know, it happens to everyone else, but not to you. No, I'm telling you, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. And if you put in the work now, if you are diligent, if you practice this, if you do the hard work now, it's going to pay off, I guarantee you. And Josh can tell you from personal experience that it will help you in every area of your life. So Josh, this was just like amazing. So just, like, I, I literally like, I took notes because it, it's, it's spot on. I've seen what you've talked about. 
play out so many different areas in life. Uh, and I just, I just am really grateful, man, for, for you being on here, for you sharing your, your wisdom and everything that you've learned in this area that's so important, especially now in pharmacy, the area of how to pivot, how to react during those key moments and what to do so that you can prepare yourself so that you're well equipped to act when those things happen. I mean, just going through life, regardless if it's business, pharmacy, family, one thing that I always try to strive for, regardless of where I'm at, is to add value, whether that's adding value to my business, my patients, my pharmacy, because once you're valuable, that's when the success starts to come. And we all have that different opinion of success. But you could be the most valuable mother to your kids. And yes, you're going to be the mother of the year. You can be the most valuable pharmacist to your pharmacy. Next thing you know, you'll have seven branches under your wing. So adding value is key. So I'm honored that you find this valuable. You're taking notes. And I truly hope the listeners can find that as well. Because for me, that will be mission accomplished today for sure. Well, it's a big check mark in my book, man. Like, absolutely. Thank you. Thank so you, thank you very much. Um, but I'm curious. So I know we did a lot of pharmacy talk, but... So something a little big in the bio there that we just kind of glossed over in the bodybuilding world. Tell us about this professional status now and, and that little journey, because that's freaking a big deal. It was, um, it's been a, let me just say that some, some things have happened that surprised myself. Um, turning professional in men's physique bodybuilding was one of them. Um, I entered, you know, natural competitions within different federations, as you're well aware of. And uh, I was fortunate enough to win the overall up, up in Philadelphia, um, which allowed me to get my pro card. I then competed in my first natural professional show in Orlando, and I was extremely fortunate to win that show as well. So with that being said, I, I qualified for the Mr. Universe competition in Miami in November. So we will be competing in that uh, at the end of this year. And I'll be looking forward to the donuts and vacation uh, late November for sure, my friend. That will be coming with the turkey, for sure. <laughs> so, so, so luckily for me, it's the week before Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving will be much sweeter this year, probably, than it has in my entire life. So um, we're, we put together a really good plan. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm hanging out, let's just say that, for about two more weeks. And we're going to hammer it hard September 1st, which for me, I really look forward to because not only does that give me discipline outside of the pharmacy, it gives me discipline inside of the pharmacy. And uh, eating those meals every three hours and, and prepping my meals and so on and so forth just allows me to be even more efficient uh, at work. It, it is not a deterrent. It helps me personally and professionally without a doubt. Congratulations, man. That's freaking incredible. And guys, you might be listening to you know, all of Josh's accolades and accomplishments and being like, holy crap, like pharmacy world, pff, mind blown. But then you see the fitness world and you're like, how the heck does he manage all this? How can he fit in fitness into pharmacy? We did a podcast. Um, a year, maybe two years ago, about this exact topic, um, back one of the original episodes of the Fit Pharmacist Healthcare Podcast. Um, there will be a link in the show notes for you to listen to that because literally we could do a whole podcast about how Josh has been able to do this, how he's been able to find that balance. And we literally did. There's a whole other podcast on this topic. So I, re I refer you guys to that because that was also an amazing value packed episode that I think you'll find super fascinating. Because, you know, it's, it's one thing to do pharmacy and fitness, but Josh does both at an extremely high level consistently and over the test of time. So that was a really, really fun podcast. Uh, and then I want to really encourage you guys to listen to that as well. Um, but Josh, I, again, I want to just acknowledge you for all the amazing things you're doing, not just in fitness world, but especially in pharmacy world and for our overall world in, as, a, as a whole. Um, you're an amazing individual. You're so driven. And you're, you are a giver. And I really believe that the secret to living is giving. And you do that on a daily, consistent basis in all areas of your life. So thank you so much for just being who you are, uh, for showing up every day, bringing your best, and for sharing that here on the podcast because it, it was phenomenal. And I just, I really appreciate you, brother. For those kinds of words, you know, I, I truly don't deserve them. I, I just think what keeps me going throughout the day is, Something that I absolutely get pure joy out of is being able to help those people I love. And I love my colleagues. It's not a joke. I truly love them. And anything I can do to help them live their dreams is what makes me feel incredible. So that's what keeps me going is being able to give my own time, my own effort, you know, my own monetary value, whatever it takes for me to see those people I care about live their dreams and leave my mark of that 
positivity whenever they leave the room because they spent some time with me. Uh, that's truly what keeps me going. So thank you for noticing that about me and, and saying those kind words. I appreciate you having me, Adam. 100%, man. And just like Josh said, he loves to help those he cares about. This, without a doubt, this episode was so packed with value and help. So I really encourage you guys, if you found value, if you found just one little nugget of knowledge that's going to help you take yourself to the next level so you can dispense your full potential to those you serve and love in your life, share this episode. Send it to someone. When you do, please tag me. I want to encourage you guys to really help spread this message. There's some phenomenal leaders in our profession who are really you know, coming open and just sharing all the things that they've learned. And this isn't just for me. This isn't just for you. This is a community. This is a community of pharmacy students, of pharmacists, looking to be the change that we so desperately want to see in pharmacy. And that all begins with you. That's why I wrote the first book, RxU, because the most important script in your life, we fill millions, the most important script you can fill is you. And what do you know? It's in Josh's background right there <laughs> and mine. <laughs> so there's a reason for that. I, I want you, really encourage you guys to share this. I want this community to grow. There's so much valuable content that's on these episodes. I want to share this with our profession, pharmacy students, pharmacists. This is all over every podcast platform, Spotify, iHeartRadio, um, on uh, pretty much literally every single one you can think of. So please share this episode. When you do, tag me on Instagram, at The Fit Pharmacist. If you're on Facebook, it's Fit Farm Fam. Please be sure to post this with one person that you really care about because that is going to help us make this change and it all starts with you. Now, having said that, uh, if you, like I said in the beginning, if you guys don't follow Josh, you need to. Uh, Josh, I'm going to put all of your links for your social media handles um, in the show notes so that people can connect with you. Uh, but where are you most active? How can people best follow you and engage with you to learn more about what you're doing in the world? Look forward to engaging with all the listeners. It's something I, I thoroughly look forward to. Any human or person or any person that wants to pick my brain is more than happy to. I like sharing my, my past experiences and thoughts. I'm absolutely most active on Instagram. It will be the only Stony, which will be tagged underneath, and LinkedIn, which is just under my name, Josh Stone King Farm D. Those are the two I use most. So if it's a professional question for pharmacy, um, go ahead and send that to LinkedIn. If it's a personal question about bodybuilding or anything else, please go ahead and reach out on Instagram, the only Stony. And guys, he means it. Like I reached out to him on a whim, like what, five, six years ago. And here we are on our second podcast episode. So he's not just saying this, he actually will give you the time of day. Like he's a very giving person as you've heard on this episode. So please uh, engage with him, ask him questions, show him love and support. As you've heard, he's a super busy guy. So I really appreciate his time in, in sharing this. And he really wants to help you guys implement this. It, it sounds great. The tips are awesome but they're not gonna do jack unless you put action into them and implement it into your daily life. So with that being said, I wanna let Josh go because I'm sure he's got some squats to attend to or an empire to build or grow. Uh, so guys, thank you so much for listening. This is Dr. Adam Martin with the Fit Pharmacist Healthcare Podcast, signing off with the Do Dr. Joshua Stone King, the only Stony. Guys, use this, implement it, change your life so that you can impact others. Go forth, be great, and dispense your full potential.